channel my name is Ronaldo Moore with PPG and if you are new to the channel please subscribe hit that little notification bell so you'll know when I'm dropping these videos today's topic is what are we talking about today we're talking about uh, pressure reducing valve PRV high water pressure low water pressure when and how to tell when your PRV is going bad and uh <laughs> I, I have to share <clears throat> something with you guys uh, somebody made a comment on one of my videos uh, they they watched the whole entire video which I think may have been 18 19 20 minutes long and the only comment was that I said, um, too much, <laughs> which, which I thought was very funny. Uh, I even went back last night and I watched a lot of my videos and sure enough, I said, um, too many times, a lot. I say it a lot. I don't know why. So I'll work on that. I'll do better there. Um, Somebody else made a comment about, uh, uh, again, they watched the entire, I'm, I'm assuming they watched the entire video, but they their comment was, I think his comment was, uh, my intro was too long. So I provided like 20 minutes of, I thought was informative information and his only comment was, my intro was too long. <laughs> So I'll shorten that up as well. I'll, I'll do better there. So, but let's let's just get into this this video. We're talking about PRVs. How can you tell if your PRV? <clears throat> let, me, let me get serious here. How can you tell if your PRV is going bad? So, let's get into it. <laughs> All right. So what you are looking at now is a PRV, pressure reducing valve. Every home should have one. They come from the factory already set, factory set at a specified PSI. I think this one is set to 50 PSI. Y'all should have a little, like a little tag. And you can see that it's factory set at 50 PSI. Typical street pressure can range from 120 to 150 pounds per square inch PSI. You don't want anything over 80 PSI coming into your home. Because anything over that will damage your water system. It'll screw up fixtures. It'll mess with with with, with faucets. Um, it'll it'll damage your water system. Anything over 80 psi. So this is used to reduce the street pressure down to you know 55, 60 psi. And like I said, it it's already factory set at 50. So you can adjust it by screwing this little little nut here. I'll zoom in on that. A the the direction of water is going that way by the end by the hour indication the indication on the hour there so water is coming in here there is a little strainer i don't know if you can see that or not but there's a strainer in in this particular unit a lot of you don't have strainers but but this one does and it reduces the the pressure down down to under 80 psi These PRVs are typically located uh, in your attic, crawl space, garage, uh, laundry room, wherever your incoming water is entering into the house, you'll typically find a shutoff valve and then you'll see, hopefully you'll see one of these. Typical lifespan on, on one of these units, probably 10 to 15 years, maybe 20. 
I wouldn't go over 20, but typically 10 to 15 years, the typical lifespan. One way to find out if you have a bad PRV, well, first of all, find where it, it is located in your home and check it to make sure it's not, it's not leaking. Another way is to go to one of the big box hardware stores and get you one of these. It's a, it's a pressure gauge. Typically find them in the sprinkler lawn section of one of the big box hardware stores. But get you a little pressure gauge. These typically cost about six, seven dollars. The price of a PRV can range from you know, 150, 250. Depend really depends on the brand, but they typically range from 100, 150, maybe 200, 250. I think to get one installed, if you hired a plumber to come in and change out your PRV, could typically range from, um, think about five, six hundred bucks. But you could do it yourself. Nah, just just call somebody to, to come out and do it for you if you cinch you have a bad PRV. But one way to find out if you have a bad PRV is just to get your pressure gauge and find out what your what your pressure is. You take one of these these gauges and like I said, you can go and buy one. They typically range from six, seven dollars. And just go to your wash machine box, screw that on to your cold water side and see what your what your number is let me, you know in anything let me flip that around here you see that but anything over 80 and this pressure gauge is in in psi anything over 80 psi and you will probably have a problem it could be your pressure gauge it, it, it could be could be something else but i would definitely look into changing that out if it's been over over 15 years another way is to take this pressure gauge and screw this just your, your hose bib on your on your exterior of your home every home well all the new homes now require they are required to have two hose bibs but if you're in an older home you, you could just have one so check and see but i would definitely go to the washing machine box on some homes that I've I've inspected in the past, the hose bib is before it, it branches off. You got your water coming in. You got a water line here, and then the hose bib it branches off before it reaches the actual PRV. So that number to that hose bib could be a lot higher than downstream of this PRV. You know, once you once you come in here, your water line, and then if your hose bib is downstream of this PRV, if it branches off and go, goes to your hose bib downstream, then you would definitely get an, an accurate reading. But if the hose bib, if you got your cold water line coming in here and it branches off before the PRV, that street, that number will definitely be higher. You, you will probably be getting most, a lot of the street pressure if it's upstream of the PRV, if you understand that. But I think you would definitely get an accurate reading if you take one of these pressure gauges and screw it on to your cold water side of your washing machine box. And you should get an, an accurate reading of your, your water pressure. And if not, I'm, well, <clears throat> I'm sure if, if that's not the correct way, I'm sure I will I will definitely get get comments down in the, the comment section from our, from a lot of plumbers. Um, I'm definitely not a plumber. I'm, I'm gonna put that out first of all. I should have should have started with that one, that disclaimer first that I'm not a plumber. But if there are better ways of trying to find out your actual water pressure, I'm sure my plumbers will definitely comment and let me know. But all right, let's. Quickly recap on on a couple, well, two or three ways to to know if you have a bad PRV. Uh, first of all, find and locate your PRV. 
if it's leaking there's there's definite an issue if you have a high psi pressure reading there's definitely an issue if this this number you typically want to be between between 55 65 psi no higher than 80 but if you have an extremely low psi number from what i understand these units can fail and you can have an extremely low pressure reading definitely they can fail when you have an extremely high <clears throat> pressure reading so get you one of these gauges here and test your your water pressure and with that one i am out hope you guys are having a great day and being safe take care